my name is Ben Rogishan. Uh, online, I go uh, by the Seattle Data Guy. Uh, and to keep intros short, I have checked. I think ChatGPT4 knows who I am. Uh, so you can ask ChatGPT uh, about me if you, if you don't know who I am. Um, so yeah, I wanted to do a talk based on basically my last couple, maybe almost almost decade now in the data world and, and just things that I've seen and things that I'd hope to see less of in the next few years. We'll, we'll never get rid of everything. Um, you know, we'll, we'll have cobalt uh, with us un, until, you know, the uh, whatever end of the universe. Um, so I wanted to take this from kind of three different points. So the kind of technology process uh, and people perspective. Um, so we'll kind of go through that uh, whole rigmarole through, through these different sections. Um, starting with kind of the first thing, uh, which there's a lot of talk, I think, about like the zero ELT or zero ETL kind of world, um, which I think most of us would consider more of a zero EL world. Uh, and I've kind of had to, for some reason or another, do a lot of SFTP uh, jobs in, in my career. Uh, the very One of the very first uh, jobs I had as a data engineer uh, was, at a health, was at a healthcare analytics company where we would take 40 or 50 different insurance providers' data sets um, and basically, you know, they'd all send it to us via SFTP. They'd all have different uh, data formats. Uh, you know, uh, if you think CSV is one, there's CSV, TSV, pipe delimited, positional, uh, XML, JSON, and basically have to take all of that uh, and make that into some form of standardized format so we could create uh, data analytics products that we would end up selling back uh, to companies like Amazon and Boeing to get them get them an idea about the health of their population, essentially, of their worker population. Um, so I had to spend a ton of time uh, setting up these jobs, making sure they were still working. Uh, and for some reason, that continued. When I went to Facebook, I somehow got deemed the person that was going to do very similar work and, and had to work with a lot of the external and uh, internal partners and sending around SFTP jobs. And, you know, while you're doing it, I don't think you think about it. You're like, this is just the way the world is. You know, I have to, like, spend a bunch of times in emails, you know, setting up agreements, making sure, like, yes, we can get this data. Yes, this is okay. Uh, from there, you know, asking them about the schema, uh, them sending over a schema file, them sending over a test file. Uh, and then for one reason or another, you always get one out of ten where the test file never matches the real file and, and spending a lot of duplicate time reworking uh, your jobs. Um, and then to add to that, the, the other thing I always felt like I was spending a ton of time doing uh, was dealing with various ways that companies would encrypt or, uh, you know, put some sort of password pr protection on these files. So it was just this constant work where it was like, okay, so this one, they did a password and encryption. This one, they did a password. This one, they, they did just encryption and setting up all of these different scenarios. Um, and so that's why, one reason, one of the things I'd love to see less of, I think, is SFTPs uh, just in general, because we're kind of getting to this world where there are other options. And that's personally exciting for me. Uh, the more we can get to that, you know, I think we are pushing towards a world where, yeah, uh, SFTP might, might uh, disappear a little bit. Um, I'm actually working with a few companies right now where this is kind of what, what they're going for. They're like uh, several organizations where it's like, hey, we want to get data from all of the various kind of schools and universities, and we would like to then be able to proliferate it out. Um, and one way we could possibly do that, rather than, again, setting up 100 SFTP jobs, which would probably take a year plus of someone's time on all different sides, um, and I imagine millions of dollars, just because that's how it takes, uh, especially in the nonprofit world when it comes to just people going on vacation. So. I just kind of view, and I'm kind of hoping to see this more and more, and I'm starting to see some companies. I, I had one company earlier this year who started building data products uh, this way, where they're like, hey, we're going to build on Snowflake, and now you can just take your data from Snowflake directly. And it, it doesn't have to be Snowflake. I know there's plenty of other options. Uh, actually, this morning, I was talking to a solution that is looking to you know, make it so whether your data's in Databricks or Snowflake or Azure or whatever, they can share it openly across all of those various uh, kind of formats, because obviously that's currently a restriction that I imagine most of these larger organizations don't want to solve um, just for, for, for their own purposes. Um, so that's that's something I think I would really like to see more of and, and see, well, see less of in terms of SFTP and more of in, in this kind of world where data is a little more open. Um, I was always remembering, again, back to uh, when I worked at Facebook, is that everyone would have their kind of own namespaces and if you ever want to like get access to data in someone else, like let's say ads data, as long as there was no security issues, you could just easily go to UI and be like, hey, 
I know this where this table is coming from. I know what this table is named. I'll find it and just port it over uh, to, to my namespace so I can use it and it will just automatically be synced. Um, so that's something I'm hoping to see more of. I, I imagine people are, are planning this. I don't know if you guys are, um, but that's definitely something uh, I'm really personally excited about and uh, hoping I can do more to like remove <laughs> uh, any SFTP job. Um, for me, it just feels like a lot of duplicate work. Um, so that's one thing that I'm, I'm really excited about, I think, kind of reducing in the future. Um, so from a processes, did I hit it? So from a processes standpoint, um, I think I, like many consultants, kind of have this curse where we get brought in um, often to fix problems. So we maybe have a little more of a biased view on in terms of what is going on. Uh, so I think last year, 30% of my time was spent on fixing what I call key person dependency issues. So that's someone built something in the past, they quit, you know, they're not there anymore, please come in and, and, and fix this, this problem. Uh, one of the things that you kind of see throughout this whole thing is you'll sometimes come into a solution, like last year I came into someone's solution that had developed a Airflow-like system themselves, but this had clearly been built over several engineers and several architects' timelines, so you saw every which way uh, that they had developed each kind of different path and job. Um, it, it made me think, if any of you have read um, The Mythical Man Month, uh, there's like a chapter where he talks about how these cathedrals, um, basically over hundreds of years, despite having you know multiple architects and multiple people build it, they had some sort of core uh, design, and, and you could see it, and you wouldn't have all these weird kind of hodgepodge designs that changed with the times. Um, but that's I, something I'm not seeing currently. Uh, usually when I come into different teams or, or come into different projects, it feels like there's various standards that were kind of put into place. Either that was because there was a lack of standards in the beginning, so they had never anything to connect to, or, you know, just everyone kind of set their own. Um, and I think we are going to this world where that's, you know, it's clear where to start. Um, I, I was really excited when I think I saw like GitLab and a few other companies had like their standards and, and design processes out there. Um, they were very similar to the ones that our team at Facebook had. So I was like, okay, you know, we're starting to get to a point where people can just find this stuff online. You know, when, when I first started, it was just like, you kind of guessed, you know, maybe, maybe you read a book and kind of tried to implement what you found in a book. But I think there's a lot more of this information aggregated online. Um, just as kind of another point, uh, you know, like, what, is, what does this lead to? I, I just remember one specific project uh, where, where, like, lack of standards led to was your kind of classic uh, data swamp. I just took this from the data engineering subreddit, so you can honestly just look this up if you'd like to take this image. Um, but yeah, since they had never set standards, uh, when I got into uh, essentially their data lake, um, they never put any sort of folder structure in place and everything was literally in a folder called data uh, for the last like five years. And, you know, they probably had like 10 or 20 data sources that they were pulling every day or two or three times a day and, and thousands and thousands of files that I had no idea what was going on. And so that, that to me kind of spoke to like there being a lack of standards early on um, that never kind of got fixed throughout time. Uh, but again, I think this is something that we can slowly start to fix. I think uh, there are tons of options. You know, you can just honestly Google. Uh, I like, again, GitLab has a, has a good, like, open uh, documentation there where you can kind of get a good understanding of what good standards could be and, and build from there. Like, no one's saying you have to take them. You can kind of build your own. Um, but I think, like, having documentation in terms of, like, what things should look like in your company and, like, making sure you pass it on through onboarding, through good processes, um, then you'll kind of uh, avoid a lot of the problems that I, I feel like have occurred um, over the past probably decade. So that's something I'm excited about. I, I am seeing more and more people do this. I'm seeing more and more people implement things like linters and formatters from the get-go rather than, like, having everyone kind of do whatever they want and, and over time things kind of just decaying. All right, so for my final my final point in terms of things, well, this one's less of a things I'd, I'd rather not see, but just things that I think are changing. So uh, I saw this po I saw this post, and maybe that's smaller than I realized, but I saw this post from uh, Zach from uh, Linked, or actually this one I think was on Twitter, where he basically talked about the fact that for the next few years, yes, data engineering might blow up. And then it might kind of dissipate and uh, mold into software engineering. Um, and, and this just kept making me think how I think for the last few years, uh, you know, companies have wanted to live in this, in this state, right? Like the current state is we have software engineers and data producers on one side. We have data engineers who kind of tend to be the bottleneck. 
uh, sorry, data scientists, uh, and then you know data scientists and analysts on the other side who really want access to data, but they're usually kind of slowed down. Uh, where companies would prefer, you know, just to be directly right there, everything's connected. Um, and, and I keep thinking about like where where is this going? Because um, I have people. Because if you've seen my YouTube content, a lot of the a lot of my YouTube content tends to be intro. Um, so I get a lot of people asking like, is data engineering going to be around in the next few years? You know, is it a good job choice? Uh, which the first thought I I kind of have there is. Um, Welcome to tech. Uh, I don't know, like, it, you know, technology changes. Like uh, when I first started, I was working on Oracle and SQL Server, then shoved into Hadoop and now on the cloud. So it's like, it, it, it might change. But I think the things I do know, um, you know, in the last few years, I know that Airbnb at one point tried to get rid of data engineers and then roughly had to bring them back a few years later um, just to have someone own, own the data sets. So I do think a lot of things will change in terms of maybe how data engineers look. Maybe the work we're doing is slightly different, but I, I feel like someone will always end up owning uh, the data sets, what they look like, their quality, their reliability. I think that's an unavoidable kind of state. Um, and in most cases, most data engineers are overworked anyway. So maybe we have better tools. Uh, you know, we're no longer having to write MapReduce jobs. That's great. We're maybe now getting to a point where we're not having to build our own infrastructure. That's great. But there's always something at the end where it's like someone has to manage what the data looks like, you know, what's the actual reliability of it. So it's really hard, I think, to get rid of that last little bit. But, you know, I'm not going to uh, call it. I, I'm no oracle, but I, I don't think this is something we'll see that will disappear uh, in the next five years. Honestly, that's is my talk.